All right, we're going to try another one of these videos. This time uh, we're going to talk a little bit about buying old i7s. And by old i7s I sort of mean uh, Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge, Haswell kind of era, so 22 nanometer and older. Um, but, I mean, I guess you could sort of make the same argument for 7700K or 7600K. Um, basically, uh, how this came about is I was watching some video a while back where someone recommended an Ivy Bridge i7 rather than recommending a i3 10100F or something similar to that. And so I thought I'd just make this video to sort of summarize my thoughts. So let's start with um, with the 10100F and sort of show the price to beat um, for a system. So 10100F, uh, we can get uh, we can get for eighty five dollars in the US, maybe eighty dollars or a little bit less than that used if you want to go to eBay. Um, we can get a B five sixty motherboard for around ninety ninety five dollars and then a uh, a kit of DDR4 uh, 3200. So this is just you know plain CAS 18 stuff. Uh, uh, sorry, CAS 16. So 3200, 1618, 18. Uh, and these will run you about sixty dollars. So overall, you end up with a cost of about uh, 230 to 240 US dollars for uh, for the motherboard, CPU, and memory for a Comet Lake. Uh, i3 and uh, so that gives you a decent modern quad core so let's compare this then to the i7 uh, of ivy bridge so the seven, uh, 3770k and just scrolling through ebay through the um through the completed listings you see them sort of around 90 to 100 dollars um so yeah so these are not particularly cheap let's say that at the very least. Then you have to get a Z79 motherboard for it, and these are sort of all over the place because the quality, of course, is all over the place. Um, I mean, this is not a bad. This is not. Um, this is not the completed listings, though. So See, some of these boards are interesting. This one, uh, I mean, it's a gimmick board, but yeah. Completed listings, I think these ones, yeah. So something really cheap like this. Sixty-five dollars. I mean, yeah, seventy-five. This is okay. So I think sort of the bottom end, you'll be t talking about seventy, eighty dollars. Um, and then for DDR3, um, for DDR3, at least sixteen hundred. You'd be talking about around fifty to sixty dollars for a kit. Uh, maybe you're lucky like this guy and get something that cheap. But they're mostly going to be around uh, fifty to sixty dollars for a two by eight kit of uh, sixteen hundred or faster. So that leaves you around uh, two hundred twenty dollars, maybe a little bit less, uh, depending on how lucky you get on the CPU and the motherboard. So two hundred dollars, uh, sorry, two hundred twenty dollars. But then you don't still need to get the cooler on top of that um, because most of these CPUs will just come uh, just a CPU without a cooler. So you need to find a cooler for that and that'll run you some extra money too. Uh, and then let's look at the 4770. I didn't look at the 4... Well, I did look at the 4770K, but um, the 4770, the locked ones, are a little bit cheaper. $80 or so maybe if you're lucky. Uh, it'll be about 10 more for the unlocked one. And then for a... Um, for a Z87 motherboard, you're talking about around $90. These are a bit more expensive. I mean, you could maybe get something really cheap like that if you're lucky. But, I mean, a lot of these, look at this, $150, $160. Some of these have CPUs in them, of course. But, yeah, if you're going to put an i7 in it, you don't want it with a CPU. And you might find one with an i7, maybe. There. So that's 200 for the whole kit. So... Unless you find something like this, uh, you'll be talking about around two hundred twenty dollars again for the um, for the Haswell i seven um, with uh, motherboard and memory. So you're only talking about around sort of ten twenty dollars more to get the Comet Lake i three, the quad core, uh, and 
you know, the Comet Lake i3 over the i7s. And then if we look at the performance now, um, here we have the, we can see the 7700K. I guess first I'll go to this graph here. Here we see the 7700K here and the 10100 with uh, 3200 memory. So you see there's a little small gap. Um, the 7700K is clocked a bit faster. Uh, but then if we go to the comparison of the 7700K versus the 3770K, I mean, this is just blows the 3770K uh, out of the water. And the 4770K, I mean, it's doing better, but that's still a reasonable gap in performance there. And then on top of that, you're going to get barely any USB 3, especially on the Ivy Bridge um, ones. If we look at, uh, I don't know, let's say Z77 LX, uh, this one, for example. I mean, you're going to get two USB, two USB 3 ports on the back. Um, you get an internal header, so... That's all right, I guess. Don't get any M.2 on those boards. Uh, maybe on the Z87 boards you might get M.2s. See this one? Or do they not? Uh, oh, I guess we can't see the images on these. Um, so Z87 tough or something. This one. So no M.2 slots on that. You, of course, get the USB. You get more USB on the rear I.O. too on one of these. Uh, but let's compare to B560. Something like this. You know, it's a cheap motherboard, but it'll run an I, uh, I3 perfectly fine. You get the USB on the rear, you get M.2, you get a uh, bunch of SATA. So, you know, it's not... Uh, it's definitely not worse by going off uh, off one of these lower end boards, uh, especially compared to the C77. You just don't have any M.2 at all. You don't have much USB on the older boards either. And then when we're talking about these Z77 boards, these are almost 10 years old. The CPUs are also almost 10 years old, so you can forget warranties and stuff like that. Um, I mean, yeah, the CPUs will still work. I mean, I still go around benching stuff that's... Uh, sort of 15 years old it still works but you never know when it will uh when it'll pack up on you one of these you'll get warranty you'll get warranty of the motherboard you'll get warranty of the memory so you know that's one thing um then the other thing is security patches all of the um all of the intel cpus before comet lake so um ninth gen and older are uh have the security patches via software and those uh, reduce your performance quite a lot more than the hardware security fixes they implemented in Comet Lake. So then again, you're going to lose performance. You have no upgrade path whatsoever because you're stuck on one of these 10 year old boards, um, something like this. You know, you can at least put, I mean, I wouldn't trust this with a, with a 10900K or an 11900K, but you can put probably a 10700 in there and it'll work pretty decently. Um, so you can put an 8-core CPU in there and do fine. I mean, you could probably put a uh, 10900K in there if you wanted, just undervolt it a little bit and uh, set the power limits reasonably. And in games, I don't think you'll notice the difference because it won't, uh, it won't exceed the uh, capabilities of the VRM. Um, so... In here, you have an upgrade path then as well. And then, of course, lastly, of like I said, the performance is just not uh, is not at all competitive. So at the end of the day, you know, you're going to save maybe $40 if we uh, talk about the, um, about, uh, where was it? $40 if we consider this. I mean, is that really is that really worth dropping M dot twos, dropping you know having a ten year old, almost ten year old uh, board in the case of this one, you know, it's eight years old or something like that, um, dealing with the security patches, everything like that. I honestly think it's really absurd to recommend any of these i sevens nowadays. Um, it's just completely uncompetitive compared to one of these. 
So let me know what you think, um, if this video is useful, and uh, see you in the next one.